Welcome to the Steroids Podcast with your host, Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. The Steroids Podcast is brought to you by Ultimate Guide to Roids, 109-page ebook by Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand. Now, for the first time in bodybuilding history, you have someone with no corporate interests and no obligation to please anyone, not walking on eggshells to not offend. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the information, the whole information, the whole truth, not a full truth and a half truth. Full truth. Ultimate Guide to Roids gives you the keys to the Lamborghini, gives you the information, and lets you decide what to do with it. It's a crime this information has been suppressed this long. Now let's get on with the podcast. Okay, welcome to the next episode of the Steroids Podcast. This is Dan the Bodybuilder from Thailand, and I've got my friend D Tren from the TikTok on here. Uh, what's up brother you know the drill baby ready to get to it yeah, <laughs> yeah so so we got some I, I wanted to ask him some questions he's like a he's a open uh, steroid user on social media and you know how it's kind of hard to find these guys who are open but actually honest you know we got like a lot of guys on the social media who say oh I you know I use my TRT and they're really popular on YouTube or whatever. And you see these muscles that look like a bodybuilders and they're talking about their, their TRT or whatever. This is not somebody like that. And he's open and he's a social media person. So I thought it was a really good type of person to have on here. So the first question I wanted to ask you, D-Trend, is uh, what made you decide natural bodybuilding was not something you were going to pursue? Because you're pretty young still, aren't you? Yeah, I'm 21. Very young. So um, I was, you know, training naturally, you know, I, I always liked working out in the gym. I've always been a very athletic, you know, kid growing up. Uh, eventually I got into bodybuilding, going in the gym with one of my friends who's also natural. And, you know, we swore, oh, we're always going to stay natural. You know how, how it is, like natties when they first get into it with the C4 and, you know, they're yeah. fucking RG. And you kind of had a little bit of pride. Is that, is that what you're saying? You had a little bit of pride about, like, I'm natural yeah, when you first yeah, started? Yeah, yeah, like, oh, we're natural. We don't need to look like that. We could look better. We could look, you know, really good without gear. You know, we don't need to go bald or da da da. You know, the common stereotypes and stuff. And yeah, um, I, also, another, another feeling with that too is is where you feel like, uh, oh, you know, I don't want to give up my natural virginity because you know, then then I can never say I'm natural again. And there's some kind of like pride in wanting to say yeah, I'm natural. Yeah. Of course, and and the, yeah, and the, and there's always a huge stigma around steroid users. Like, if someone found out, you know, at least a, like two years back, I don't know, it's probably still like this. If you use steroids, it's like, wow, like that's that's disgusting. Like that's terrible. Like you're a fucking, you're a drug addict. You use steroids? Like mm-hmm. people, it's like it's such a negative stigma. Like if anyone knew, or oh yeah, he sticks a needle in his ass, like you know so people yeah we were like I, I don't really want to be a part of that like, i don't want to be that's like worse, try to make, worse than a fucking they try, like. they try to make it sound gay too they're like putting stuff up your up your ass, up your ass. <laughs> like, yeah exactly like, that part it's in the cheek <laughs> yeah yeah so um i was you know training i was i was um 18 years old i was at 160 pounds i was like nine eight percent body fat i was very lean and you know, I wanted to pack on some mass. So me and my friend, we trained at the gym every day. We made it a goal to see how big we can get naturally in like a four cool. to six month cool. time period. Yeah. So you guys wanted and, to be bodybuilders, right? Yeah, from the start. We, we, yes, but we didn't, we weren't, you know, enhanced. We just, you know, we, we loved guys like Arnold, the golden era guys. Like we had that mentality just without the steroids. So we'd be in there training every day for like three hours. We high volume. We trained just like them every day. And I went from about 165 to about 195 in a span four to five months and i packed on a lot of muscle i was training you know for about three uh about five to six months and i went from 165 to 195 during that that time period of training and Uh, i wasn't natural yeah naturally i wasn't satisfied because some muscle groups wouldn't grow like my chest no matter what i did just wouldn't really grow or you know my lats they just 
really grow like how I wanted it to. And I looked good. I looked athletic, but I, like I said, I was not satisfied. I was like, man, like I want more, you know, I want, I want to be like Arnold. So I started watching more stuff like what Arnold, you know, how he trained and obviously he took steroids. And eventually I decided to take, you knew, you knew, you you knew Arnold took steroids right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was the, the deciding, like the deciding factor, you know, I was taking my creatine, all that. I was taking like 10 grams a day, training three oh, hours. Oh, you, you were taking the creatine big. Yeah, I was taking as much as I could because, you know, I wanted to get the most out of it. And, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I was, I was, my strength was going up very well. I was doing the, the big lifts, the compound lifts all the time, deadlift, squat, bench press. And I trained for 15 days straight. I was just training, 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 and I got burnt out and I just wasn't satisfied. So I started looking at pro hormones and then Mm -hmm. I did a little bit more research and I figured like pro hormones are a waste of money. And I got into, you know, steroids and then looked at it and I figured that it's really not that expensive. You went straight to the the roids. You didn't do like SARMs or pro hormones first. No, no, definitely. I looked into the pro hormones, but I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to do this. If it's only going to be six weeks, it's not going to be worth it. Like, I want to do what Arnold is doing, you know. And obviously, he didn't mm-hmm. do testosterone, but a 19-year-old, 18-year-old me didn't really know that. So, like, I want to do what Arnold did. I want to be like Arnold. You know, Arnold got on gear at 16. You know, I can get on gear. Like, if he did it, I can do it. That was, like, my mindset. Like, I don't care what anyone says. I looked at him, and I wanted to be, you know, like Arnold. I wanted to be exactly like him. And I had that mindset too, like, all right, I got to have the mindset of Arnold. So what would he do? He'd just hop on this shit. He wouldn't second guess it or be afraid. He'd just do it. And everyone else would tell me, no, don't do it. That's terrible. So I didn't listen to anyone. I didn't uh, ask anyone for permission. I just found the, I did you, like, five how did that go on that D ball and testosterone cycle when you started? Okay. So the, I literally felt the Diana ball the first day I took it. So I popped, you know, Ow. 20, yeah. 20, um, it was 25 milligrams. It came in 25 milligram capsules and you can't count them up in half. So I just took the whole thing pre-workout and I was in the gym training with my, you know, my best friend at the time. And I felt the Diana ball instantly. Like, the endurance, yeah, I felt the mental effects of it instantly, like euphoria. And like, uh, I just, I just had a lot more muscular endurance. Like I felt like I could keep going longer yeah. than my natty self. Like, yeah, like it, it, you're like, man, I can't tire myself out. That's one of the major yeah. effects of, of like anadrol, D ball. Yeah, like I was doing my dips for chest, and I'd usually do maybe 12 to 15, and I would easily hit like 25 plus reps. I was just doing body weight, and I knew like that was when everything was really working because I just felt my endurance was insane, and I felt really good. Like that first day, I was like, man, I was hooked. I was like, I don't ever want to come off this shit. Like, it feels this <laughs> good. One day, <laughs> yeah, literally one day. You're like yeah. a, a true believer, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One day I was like, man, this is the shit. I never want to come off this. And then by day three is when I started noticing physical changes. Like I literally went up in five pounds in like three days, and I was like, wow. Like I just kept getting bigger and bigger as days went on. But Why does your body look so much bulkier for no reason? Yeah, like I was like my my eating wasn't that bad but the the bad thing about it was is that i read up um some info on dianabol and i heard that it, it could cause um gyno gynecomastia so i was very um i guess paranoid about my estrogen so i was taking a tab of aromacin every day from day one and um i think my natty estrogen levels were not very high so literally by day five i was in the gym and i looked at myself and i was down like maybe 10 pounds and my face was chiseled as fuck, and I had abs, like, literal, like, I just got a six-pack out of nowhere. Like, even natural, I didn't have that. I was like, fuck, like, it looked like I dropped 3% body fat in literally less than a week. Like, this is, this is what steroids is, this is amazing, but reality, what was happening is I crushed my E2 by, um, by oh. taking the aromas in too early. So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, my kidneys. I, I noticed I felt a pain kind of near where my kidneys would be. They hurt, you know, like they, they felt uncomfortable. And my strength and like my motivation was gone. And I looked very dry, like my skin, but I looked very like lean out of nowhere. And it kind of fucked up um, my first week or so. So I just laid off the 
the AI for a while. And two how days later, ball? I was taking 25 a day, but once I noticed my ET was crashed, um, I took mm-hmm. 50 milligrams like, in, like for two days. So, so it, you it knew recovered. right away. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty quick, you know. Troubleshooting when you're on that first week or first month of uh, using steroids for the first time can actually be pretty uh, nerve wracking. It can cause quite a bit of anxiety because you you don't you have no idea what to expect. Yeah, and um, I kind of wish I didn't start with D ball first. I mean, I do, I did love it. Like, I don't regret it. But if I would have started with just testosterone or maybe a Tyrana ball or Anadrol, I probably would have had a lot smoother first few weeks. Because dealing with that mm-hmm. estrogen when you're a beginner is kind of hard to do. You know, it's it's a bit of a challenge because you can't really tell, and you you're obviously going to be paranoid. Yeah, you don't know. I don't want high, what is low. And, yeah, exactly. and you know you don't want that. And so you're taking, so you're taking yeah. a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Too. On my first cycle, man, I, I was like, I was like, Novadex, Clomid, Arimidex, Eximestane. Yeah. I was like, all of them. Yeah, so I was, I was like, kind of paranoid, but you know, I, was, I, I started taking my D ball and hopped off the AI. Like, I took like a week off of AI, and I gained it ten pounds back in like a few days, and I noticed my. Um, my estrogen, you know, was climbing back up. Uh, I stayed lean, like, you know, leaner than what I was natural, or at least looked leaner, but like a solid, like, probably four to five weeks. Like, I think it took a while for my estrogen to really creep up. Like, it didn't just skyrocket. Um, mm-hmm. It took a while to kind of get high. So I was taking my, I was yeah, taking around, you, like, a recall yeah, effect was, too, you know, d can burn so bad. Yeah, it, it did. And, and I took around, I think, 12.5 milligrams of Romacin at three times a week on 500 tests and 20 d And I stayed mm-hmm. very, very lean the first, like, five to six weeks. Something I can never replicate with d and tests ever since then. I've tried it before. I can never replicate that first cycle. Um, lean look, that lean but full look. I can never do it. So um, there's something about the first cycle where the body just it, it has this explosive response that it, it, yeah. it's like uh, the recomposition yeah. where, where yeah. The, fat, the fat is going away and the muscle is growing. That is a special thing with the first cycle. Yeah, it was very strong with me. Like it happened very dramatically. Um, I noticed changes in my physique. Like I said, like in the first week, I noticed, you know, strong changes. And I just kept going on, you know, with the cycle. And Natty, I was doing about 225 on bench for three. And after around eight weeks, I was doing 275 for about three or four. So my strength was definitely shooting up, um, deadlift, squat, everything. People were asking you, what are you doing at that point? Yeah. yeah. And I was always honest from the start. I was telling people, like, yeah, I'm on gear. I told my best friend, like, I know you don't approve of it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And he got to notice, you know, the, the weekly changes um that, you know, came with that <laughs> what did he and, think? uh he uh he thought he was he was he loved it he loved it because you know he liked the golden era bodybuilders like i did he loved arnold mm-hmm. he loved franco all those guys so he got to notice like the effects of d-ball and testosterone and gear and i'd show him my capsules so he had a a fun time watching me grow as we trained you know and um eventually you know i got off the d-ball uh, so took it for six weeks, five to six weeks, and I wasn't satisfied. I was like, you know, I want more. So I ordered weird yeah. combo, but I did a little research. I'm like, all right, so what other two steroids can I run that don't increase estrogen? Can maybe lean me out a little bit. And you know, I, I came up to the conclusion it was going to be Tyranabol and Proviron. So I ran those for about six weeks um, after I got off D ball. Like right as I got them around week eight, I hopped on 100 milligrams of Proviron and like. 70 50 to 70 milligrams of tranabol a day so i i instantly okay. went to more orals um i did a little research and i really like tranabol but it was very it was really mild but i did start feeling very lethargic on um tranabol and i quite kinda, a bit was, in the d-ball yeah. from yeah. The, you know people and tranabol are, are the same and it's like no they are polar opposites they're, they're, yeah they're they're very different tyranobol didn't give me that euphoric effect um what it did do is made my endurance insane like i could train uh, all day all day um but it did mess with my uh it made me lethargic i think it was messing with my blood pressure 70 milligrams a day so i was like super like kind of like out of it you know most of the probably some liver stress too so 
Um, but I really did like it. For Byron, too. But with that combo, I'm telling you, made me the horniest I ever was in my life. <laughs> with that combo. Byron, Terinabol, and testosterone? Yeah. Especially since I was still new to steroids. Like, I could go eight rounds in one day. Like, <laughs> like seriously. And I would still want more. And I don't know what it was with that combo, but it gave me insane Perfect. endurance. How much? So, I was a pro Byron. I was running a hundred. hundred milligrams. Okay. It was that man. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, pro Byron is, is manufactured. It, it, when you get pharmaceutical grid in the insert inside, it says, you know, this is for men, uh, 70, 70 years old and up with a uh, depression, full sex drive <laughs> to like give them energy and sex drive, like 70 years and up. And you were putting it in like an 18 year old dude at a hundred milligrams a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I felt like uh I guess like a, a machine in and out of the day. Like I I was it was almost crazy. Like you kind of feel like a bit of a pervert. Like you're just always fucking horny. And I I didn't I have a thing where I never I I'm kind of against pornography. You know I don't like jacking off. Like it makes me feel like shit uh, mentally. So you know I we'd walk around fucking all day with thoughts in my mind is having sex like 24 7 like it's all i fucking thought about mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it uh i liked it though it made me more motivated to train harder in the gym because you know, you're training and you know maybe you see a girl on the yeah. side and it, well it the makes you more motivated the teasing at the gym then must have been yeah what it, what yeah. did you think because you know the gym the women at the gym you know they're they're really not the nicest people at all, but they, they really are constantly teasing you in kind of a malicious way. Yeah, they're um they're almost like uh, a little bit like psychopathic, man. Like they'll they'll come up to you and like mess with you and ask you these weird questions or ask you, are you using this? Just for like a little it's like they're getting a little ego boost out of it. And you're like really thinking, like, is this bitch like being serious? Like I'm obviously not using this machine. I didn't use it for ten minutes. Why does she come up here and ask for my permission to use it like it's or how they act like you know what i'm talking about like girls they they're really they stare a lot and then it's just really weird like you i can't explain it but i try to avoid women now like i don't even try looking at them because <laughs> it's just like it's very toxic it's very like subtle though like you really have to like pay attention and i think naturals don't really understand that like when you're on hand enhanced i started noticing and being more um, aware of women, like body uh, language wise, a lot more. Okay. And um, girls, girls that go to the gym, man, they're they're really toxic. Like a lot of them, a lot more than like I think too. Yeah, they're not like the normal girl. There's something something not right. They're weird. I've made a video on this. Like girls that go to the gym every day are fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost like they they get some kind of demonic uh sense of pleasure out of um you know teasing everyone in there who's working out or something but yeah. then being, and you and you can't have it or something. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah it's like oh come come spot me come spot me on the pearl and leg curl like oh yeah you wish you had this you piece of shit like that kind of thing like or yeah. how, how my squat form look did my squat form look okay like i don't know i wasn't looking did you want me to look at your squat form like like they do these little mind games, and if you don't really understand you're it, on, you're, you'll miss you're it hormones. entirely. You're on, yeah. so they're picking on you. You know, they're making. You know, they're they're like, oh, okay, this is going to be the environment where I'm going to be able to pull this off the most effectively. The my devious. Yeah, yeah. and obviously it's going to be um, more uh, accepted in the gym for girls to wear less clothing than usual or pose certain ways than usual. But do you think women can really <laughs> know? Yeah, do you think? Really, you think women could really know if a man is on hormones? Like, could she sense that subconsciously? Like, do you really think that's that's a thing, or is it just uh, normal? Is it just is it just oh they're doing it to every man, no matter if he's on hormones, if he's young or old? You, you know, I I think there it's an ego thing for them. They're doing it to everybody, but I think they probably get more uh more fun out of doing the hormone guys. Yeah, I notice um, whenever I get on trend, back on trend, I notice uh, I won't pay really much attention to girls, but some reason they will 
you know, put, put themselves in my presence more mm-hmm. than usual. And it's typically only a trend thing. I've noticed like they really act a little bit more suspect around me from what I've noticed. Mm, you, you, you know what, that, that seems to be a thing. You, you know, there, there's a debate, you know, is it the trend or is it the body language the trend is making you have? And exactly uh, the way it's making you act. I, I remember um, I asked you a question. Uh, about that a long time ago on one of your um, older podcasts like uh, do girls like dudes on trend like are they attracted to guys on trend you said something that trend makes you more standoffish trend makes you more seem more of like maybe an asshole or arrogant or cocky and that's kind of how I'm always portrayed by people I've talked to in the gym like women in particular not so much men Uh uh-huh so I noticed that that actually played a part I sometimes I'm always mad almost mad like like I'm not mad but when I'm on like trend or you know Anadrol, it's like I just don't give a fuck. Like I'm just in there. I don't care if I pose or whatever. Like I'm just there for me, and I guess it could bring off kind of douchebag vibes, you know? Oh, like like you don't you don't even care to look at anyone or talk to anyone. It's almost like yeah. they're just not even there. Yeah, and I notice that it's particularly when I'm like, it's really funny. It's kind of fucked up, but. I'll be training and I'll see someone coming up to me like 10, 15 feet away. Like they'll make eye contact with me. I'll think in my mind, like, fuck, like I got to talk to this fucking guy. And I'll look right back at him. Like, oh, hey, man, what's up? How's it going? Like I try to try to brush people off more and it's not nice, but, you know, I notice I do that more compared to when I'm cruising. I'm, I'm like a happy camper when I'm cruising. I'm talking to everyone, but when I'm on trend, I'm just like, fuck. Ah fucking guys and try talking to me like okay okay yeah, i gotta be nice let me talk to this guy you know some of these some of these idiots like you were you were mentioning uh somebody saying you know uh are are you using this so there's some of these idiots who they just love to come up to you when you're working out and say how many more sets do you have on this and it's like uh well i have as many sets as until i'm done you fool and yeah so, so these guys, it's almost like you want to be looking angry just so that these morons will be not coming up to you. Yeah, and I'd say since I've got bigger, I'm definitely a lot less approachable than when I was smaller. <laughs> you know, being 250, 245 pounds, people, you know, are going to be a little bit hesitant around you. So I usually don't ever have to deal with people asking if I'm using something. And if I do, let's say if I do see someone, I'm, I'm right away like, yeah, I'm still using it. Like right away, like I'm not the nice guy. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, you can join in, or oh, let me. Uh, you can take it. It's fine. I'm like, yeah, I'm still using it. And typically, it it ends right there. Have you ever had any roid rage moments with that kind of stuff? Like where you've kind of like lost your cool for a moment? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, when I was on Anadrol, uh, I would take 100, 150 milligrams a day of Anadrol, and I was on Trenanante testosterone. I find damn near on a gram of Trenanante a gram of testosterone, 150 <laughs> anadrol. So I was, I was using the most, the, the most androgenic compounds. And you know, and, a gram of each. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gram of everything. And I know I get nosebleeds all the fucking time, but I'd go to the gym on anadrol and I felt like a Terminator. Like people would be like, bro, like, what's your issue? Like, well, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, oh, I have no issue. What are you talking about? Like, I'm just not a hampy camper. Like I'm not necessarily roid raging, but. I'm just like flat, like I'm just not in the mood to talk. And there's been a few times where I've been to the gym with my buddies, my good friends, and they've messed with me. Now some of your gym buddies might mess with you to piss you off. And I'd go very personal. Like I would, I would attack like they're a girl. Like I, I know something about them that maybe <laughs> they felt insecure about. And I'd bring it up like, oh, uh, hi, how's it going? They talk to you like, oh, so um, how's uh, how's what's a random name? I'm like, yeah, uh, how's Cynthia going for you? You'd be like, well, Cynthia, we're not dating. Oh, yeah, I just got done with her last night, and I uh, tossed her out on the curb. And it just crushed these guys. Like, these guys would get, like, they'd look at me like, what the fuck? Like, I was, I was an asshole sometimes. And this was when my estrogen was very high. Like, the D-ball, the test. I was, I, there was a time I stopped taking AI just to experiment for, like, a week or two. You know, and I felt like a fucking woman. Or period, but with very high testosterone. And it's like I enjoyed fucking with people. Like I was, it's almost like sadistic. I don't know what was going on with me, but I almost got like a rise out of busting people's balls. 
what you're and, saying, uh, the, the female hormones uh, being the ones that give you the mental side effects, I, I agree with that in my experience too. It's like, even with Trembolone, you know, Trembolone doesn't affect me mentally too much if I'm taking Cabergolin, but if I'm not yeah. taking Cabergolin and my prolactin gets high or my progesterone, whatever, then it affects me mentally big time. Uh, same thing with testosterone, you know, it doesn't affect me, you know, in a bad side effect way in my mind, unless the estrogen gets high. So the, the female hormones in bodybuilding are enemies. Definitely. Like there was a time period, um, I was on a, like some guy was on a leg press and uh, he had a 10 pound plate. He was using it, but you know, people are known to use 45s on leg press, right? Mm -hmm. I know a 10 pound plate. I was bench pressing or whatever. I, I go up to, and this guy's maybe 170 pounds. He's, he's, uh, I see him a lot. He, you don't really talk, but he's never really progressed. He's kind of just one of those guys that you'll see who looks the same year round or as the months go on. And I took it. It's like, hey, I'm still using that. Like, very, like, quick. Snarky. And I'm like, I was holding the 10 pound plate in my hand looking at him. Like, I look at the, the leg press. He has a 35 on there. I'm like, well, what do you mean you need a 10 pound plate? Like, stack a 45 on there. Like, you don't need this 10 pound plate. And he's like, he's like, <laughs> like, he's like, he's like, yes, I do. I'm not on steroids like you. <laughs> oh, that was a good comeback. <laughs> I was like, I looked at him when he said that. It's they wanted to bash him in the head with the fucking ten pound play. I was like, yeah, I can tell. I was like, I can tell you're not on them. It looks like you need some actually. And the plate was still in my hand. And he's like, oh man, like he tried to backtrack. I'm like, oh bro, but you look really good though. Like that high testosterone. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I put the plate back and I walked away. Like pure disrespect. Like I was like, bro, like fuck this guy. Oh man! Like I wanted to bash him with, across the fucking head when he said that. Like he instantly shot at. I'm not on steroids like you. For fucking thirty five <laughs> pounds, like what do you what do you need steroids to leg like, press a th forty five for? I was doing that natural, so it was like just Let's little get, things like that. But, he uh, had it he had that, that res response like cocked and loaded, and he was just ready. Yeah. Right, when you said it. Did it he was waiting. Like he he definitely had some. He's definitely seen me and thought some things up before. So he's had that one ready. Like, he didn't even have to think about it. It was like a natural fucking, like you said, cocked and loaded. It was in the chamber. <laughs> and uh, another thing about um, Roid Rage, there's just another time. One guy, uh, he worked at the gym, and he had a girlfriend. And she came up to me and, like, talked to me or whatever. And I complimented her hair. And I didn't know they were dating, right? This is just a normal girl. I wasn't really interested in her. I just, a little chit-chat. And uh, she, he calls her or whatever. And he comes up to me. He's this uh, Hispanic dude. He's looks like he's, you know, been to jail or whatever. He has tattoos on his face. He's like, instantly, you know, going straight aggressive. Like, bro, like, don't you fucking talk to my girl ever again. Like, I'm going to fucking, we will fucking go out right now. I'll kick your ass right now. Like, don't you ever fucking talk to my girl. And I'm, I was actually very calm. I was on trend, like 700 milligrams of trend at this point. Like 500 tests. And I was really calm. Like, hey, bro, it's fine. Like, don't worry about it. Like, I, didn't, I had no clue trying to be very respectful like how because i would listen to your podcast and you'd say you know don't try to be the guy fighting people like don't ever fight it's not cool be, you have nothing to prove so i was telling him like hey like i have nothing to prove i'm not gonna fight you like like you have you shouldn't you, you shouldn't worry at all like i'm not gonna talk to your girlfriend like i had no clue she, you guys were even dating and he walks out and leaves whatever and i was like wow like this guy came at me really aggressively and my adrenaline was very high but i stayed cool I'm collected and oh, I wasn't feel your, you could kind of feel yourself shaking afterwards yeah 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 like my adrenaline was super high but my um how I presented myself was like you know I was trying to de-escalate the situation as much as possible like man get your fucking hands out of my face da -da -da -da. walks out and uh I go back out I'm leaving I'm the gym's about to close and I walk out and he spots me and he comes up to me again and he's like bro don't you fucking talk to my girl. That's straight disrespect. I'm like, I'm like, man, like, what are you talking about? Like, like the way you're coming at me is disrespectful. And I started getting pissed off here, dude. Second time, they came up to me. And then he's still going, whatever. And uh, his coworkers start coming up because they see it. It's right in front of the gym. And I'm not trying to lose my membership. You know, I love going to this gym. And um, he instantly started switching up. Like, he tried to make me seem like the aggressor. Like, ah, oh, bro, it's not whatever. It's on you. The way the yeah. way he's speaking, it sounds like he was juicing. Yeah, it looked like yeah, it didn't look like he was, but it sounded like it. But this guy was telling me, man, I've been in the pen for fifteen years. I just got out. Like he was telling me he was out of the pen for like 
told me like five different times. Like he kept repeating it. Like he's in, she just got out of jail. He doesn't give a fuck. Uh-huh. And, um, and, uh, I, I look right when he switched up, I was like, you know, fuck you. Like you piece of shit. Like, don't you try to switch up. Like you're trying to, you're trying to be a good person in front of your fucking coworkers. When you started this bullshit, threatening me in the fucking gym. And then he instantly lost it. Like, you know, fuck this. I, like tell, uh, whatever I'm going to quit. And he came back at me and he got in my face. I'm like, listen, motherfucker, I'm like, if you put one hand on me, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you back where you belong. Like I like, you know, telling him I'm gonna send his ass back to jail like, if he hits me, because <laughs> I wasn't gonna fight this guy. Like, I, I gave him a chance too. Like, this is how fearless I felt in that moment. Like I just didn't give a fuck. I, I got in his face, like he got in mine, and I was like, you know what? Go ahead, fucking punch me. Like, I'm not gonna punch you back. Go ahead, punch me. And I turned my cheek to this guy, a free hit. He didn't hit me. Not hit me. He ended up backing out, going back inside. And like the dude just, he didn't want to do it. And like at that moment, I did not give a fuck. Like I felt no fear, no nothing. So I definitely attribute that to the trend, like the fight or flight response. At that moment, like I wasn't planning on fighting this guy, but like I had no fear. Like it was the opposite of Roy Rage. It was like, I was ready to like kill or something, you know. Like I had no, no fear, no nothing. I was waiting for him to hit you because yeah, you, you I, said you're gonna be numb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, my goal was to send this guy to fucking jail. Like I was gonna ruin this dude's life if he put his hand on me. Like that was my mindset in that moment because he just kept fucking with me. And then I went back to my car and he came out again and was talking more shit. Like, hey, bro. He tried to like, you know, like. Hey, man, like, listen, it's just about respect. Like, he tried backtracking again, and I was like, no, it's not about respect. Look how you came at me. And then he got mad again, and they would hold him back, and then he'd come back. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, you fucking faggot. I drove off, and he started walking near my car again. And so it was just a and bunch of shit. Weird. Yeah, and, and uh, this guy knew about me. Like, I guess he watched me. Like, he paid attention to me. So, again, this guy had, like, a, a little vendetta, something personal against me before I even talked to him. So what you said about uh, when when it first happened uh, that you felt like uh, you could feel your adrenaline and stuff like that. So that's that's a, one thing that I I noticed big time when I started using uh, the the steroids was that physical reaction that I get if I'm like challenged by other men like a uh, male to male competition the reaction is a lot stronger the physical the physical reaction and also just like being put in situations where you might be in a fight or something like that you know your your physical fight or flight response the way that it shoots off it's it's like a, a feeling of uh, really shaking like a you have so much adrenaline and you're shaking so much it, it's it's like oh you're just ready to go on a uh, half a second's notice yeah definitely like um I get that a lot more now. I even had that naturally. Like, I didn't have the best upbringing naturally. You know, I hung around with the wrong crowd. I did get in a few fights. So, naturally, I was always kind of like that. Like, definitely more of a... I I was not someone that ever run away. Someone disrespected me. And I was not a shit starter. But on gear, I noticed that, like, I was shaking. Like, in my... When I was walking back in my car, like, my body was, like, literally shaking. I was so amped up. I couldn't calm myself down, like, for 30, 40 minutes after. Like, it took that long for me just to relax, and it's kind of not related to fighting, but I went on a, I went to Six Flags recently, and I went on roller coasters, and again, it felt like my fucking fight or flight was shooting through the roof, and I really couldn't fucking handle it. Oh. Yeah, I could not wow. handle it, and I was on, t- I was on test, trend, super draw, all these kind of compounds, and it was the same thing, like, huh. not fighting related, but just uh, the... Yeah, the going on the on ride, they gave me that response. So, so the, you felt different going on the roller coasters on and off steroids? Yeah, definitely. Oh, that, that I, I got more. That's really I got interesting. More amped up. I got more amped up going on them. And after a while, I didn't want to go on them anymore because I started getting really, like, almost, like, stressed out. Like, after four <laughs> or five rides, I, I was like, fuck, I can't do this shit anymore. I better go home. Like, fuck this shit. I'm tired of it. Because my cortisol would shoot through the roof and then it'd come down. And it's obviously probably not healthy for someone to, to deal with that, you know, throughout the day. So I was like, fuck this shit. I don't want to do this anymore. 
yeah. yeah. So uh, these days, uh, what kind of uh, needles and syringes do you do to do your shots? Like, what are what is what is your the hormones that are the base for bodybuilding for you today? The ones you need. All right. So the ones I'm using at this very moment is just testosterone. Um, I'm cruising right now, so three. I'm about three hundred milligrams a week. That's- there's dose. Yeah, and um, I'm on uh, six IU's of growth hormone uh, per day, and you know I'm still I still have the metformin in there, and I still have the T4. So metformin, two thousand uh, milligrams, T4 about one fifty to two hundred mil- micrograms every other day or so. And for the syringes, I use you know the normal bodybuilding five cc. What was that? In your own growth hormone, can, do you do you feel that taking the T4? I, I think it really. Uh, makes the metabolism go quite a bit noticeably faster. Yeah, I noticed once I started taking the T4, um, I felt like I was leaning out a lot quicker. Like it's very subtle, but you'll look at yourself here and you're like, wow, like I look leaner. My midsection looks tighter, I look more veiny, more vascular. And like hunger after eating too. Like, like oh, I'm hungry again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, especially, uh, I notice that when I eat clean food, I don't get that as much. Like, if I eat enough of clean food, I don't get that hunger. But let's say I go out to, like, a Chick-fil-A or um, pizza, I will get hungry in, like, a matter of, like, maybe an hour or two. Starving. I agree after eating you. a huge cheat meal. Yeah. It seems to be an insulin thing. Uh, if, if the person uh, is, is, if you're just eating meat, you're not going to get hungry. But if you're eating uh, these fast uh, white processed carbohydrates like the buns on a Chick-fil-A or something, it's, you're going to be hungry again. Yeah, exactly. But I noticed uh, since, you know, I have issues with bloating and stuff, um, I would stop eating as much fast food and I'd replace my fast food meals with like a hundred gram protein shake. And I'd throw maybe some uh, egg, raw eggs in there and a hundred grams of protein and I'd just substitute that. So less calories, less carbs, and it would fill me up longer. Talk about giving talk about giving your steroids something to work with. Hundred grams of protein. Yeah, uh, I don't have a huge appetite naturally, so I notice when I eat fast food, I'd want to eat more of it. But naturally, my appetite isn't very high. Like I don't, I'm not a, a big eater, at least like I used to be. I think it's an estrogen thing too. I think when my estrogen is high, I want to eat a lot more. But when it's normal or low, I'm kind of like content. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm nowadays, you you're saying you're using the five ml, yeah the the yeah the five cc bodybuilding syringes with um let's see what I have here I think it's a twenty two, uh uh-huh. twenty two gauge for your drawing and twenty five for thinning. Okay, the it, the and, one inch. And how how much for a cycle? Like what what kind of what a uh, few compounds are you using for sure? Oh, so like my like if I get on a blast, like what compounds am I gonna throw in there? When I go on a blast, the compounds I'm gonna be using for let's say my next next blast I plan on using the forced testosterone, um, forced trenase. Uh, I really like running trenase. I've ran trenanante before, but for some reason I prefer trenase. I think it's because it's a bit stronger. It kicks in very fast, and uh, I really like equi- equi- test equipoise. prop, test prop, and test E. It, is it you like feeling it that day yeah yeah like i like the trend ace to kick in like i like the like the first like week you notice it so i do go with the, uh-huh. the trend ace more than the trend in ante um testosterone of course is going to be an ante and uh i like to throw in equipoise now i really respond well to bold and like i could run it very high and i don't get that estrogen crushing response that most guys get when they run their boulder known higher than their testosterone. So mm-hmm. I really like boulder known. So those are what like is the main, main ones. Uh, positively, the, the boulder known. What was that? What does the boulder known do positively for you? Why, why do you like it? Oh, it uh, makes me more stable on trend. It makes ah. me like more mentally. It, it, it gives me like a depressing effect um when i blast so when i take just chest and trend i almost feel like manic manic and mm-hmm. that manic like behavior can make me feel really aggressive sometimes like a normal situation like at the gym like i will just be like 
fucking someone up. Like, I don't know what it is, but like, I'll have this feeling if someone fucking were to touch me right now, like, I would beat the shit out of them. Like, it's not a normal, rational <laughs> response. Like, I will bash them across the head with a fucking dumbbell if someone fucks with me. It's like, it's not uh-huh. a normal response. It's just like very aggressive and more like volatile. But um, when I'm just, when I throw the EQ in there, it's like I'm not even running trend in terms of the mental sides. Like the, the, those more negative mental sides. And it makes me more like uh, kind of depressed, like more relaxed, like calm, like almost like very like just relaxed. Like if I was high most of the day. So that's what I noticed I, that EQ does to me mentally. So when you say depressed, you're kind of meaning like the stimulant effect. So you're meaning uh, it's, it's being depressed, the stimulant effect. Of yeah, the yeah. The stimulant effect in my libido, I notice goes down a little bit. Like I can still perform and I can still get turned on, but my libido goes down like quite a bit. So, um, and I don't have issues sleeping on it, like at all. I could go to sleep whenever. In fact, I probably sleep more when I'm on trend versus when I'm off of it. What about uh, night sweats? Do you get much of that? Oh, so it's funny. Uh, I could take trend at any dosage. I've ran up to like 300 to 1200 milligrams of trend. So I've ran it, I've pushed mm-hmm. it very high. I do not get night sweats at all. I do not get transomnia. I don't even really sweat on trend that much at all. Like I can take as much trend as I want. I do not profusely sweat and I do not get night sweats. So I don't ever have to wake uh, up in the middle of night. You, you probably don't get acne from it then either, do you? No, I get, I, in fact, my skin looks better on trend than when it does when I'm on testosterone. Like, uh, it almost gives my skin like a porcelain look. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's, that's one of those uh, individual effects, you know, certain people have different little things with their genetics. It sounds like the trend balloon just isn't able to hit your skin because you're having, uh, it's none of the typical effects of androgens in the skin there. Yeah, and um, I noticed when I take trend, the first week, my face starts to uh, float up a bit. Like, I, I'll gain 10 pounds, like a week and a half, uh-huh. taking trend. My I, muscles will be loaded with glycogen. The, the face thing, I will get that too if I don't take cabergolin. Do you use yeah. cabergolin with your yeah. trend I take uh, one milligram a week, so 0.5 twice a week. And mm-hmm. it still happens. Like, my face gets a little bit more, like, bloated. And I gain, like, even if my test is, let's say, at 500 and I'm 230, 235, Instantly, when I add Tran, a week later, I'll be 242, 245. Like, instantly. And it's it's probably a very solid, hard look, too. Not not quite the same as the D-ball look, which is a little bit no. more puffy. No, it's, it's, it's like my midsection gets light, like more aesthetic, like, you know, uh, tighter. But my mm-hmm. delts, my arms, my back, everything, my neck gets really thick. But not that bloated. It's like, it is like a, a water look, but it's not a water in the skin look. It's like my muscles are full and very, like, just massive. Um, okay, so D-Trend is honest about uh, his, his steroid use and his dosages. You guys have heard during the, uh, during the conversation so far, he's been mentioning dosages like, oh, I use 1,000 milligrams of Trend, 1,000 milligrams of testosterone, 1,000 milligrams of Anadrol, and obviously he more than a thousand milligrams of equipoise. So why are you like this? Because that's the opposite of most guys. You know, we know that uh, bodybuilding uh, size is dosage dependent on steroid use. That's a major factor in how big a bodybuilder is. But this, uh, you're, you're kind of, there's a few people who will talk about this and admit, you know, what it actually takes the dosages to be a bodybuilder. Uh, why, why are you one of the people that are doing that? So the reason why, I'm like that. It's because, you know, I have that mentality that, again, goes back to the Arnold mentality. Do whatever it takes. You know, you hear them say it. I will do whatever it takes. And that applies to my steroid dosages. And bodybuilders don't take low dosages. You know, this is the truth. People don't want to admit it. But you see results from higher dosages. And I remember the first time I even heard about this was, in fact, from you. Your podcast probably oh. a year and a half ago or so. You were like, yeah, if you're not taking a thousand milligrams of testosterone, 
you're, you're really not going to get that effect or you're not, you don't have a thousand to 1500 milligrams of steroids in your blood. You're not going to look like those bodybuilder guys. You're not going to look impressive. And I was like, that makes sense because I'm under that and I don't look as good as I thought I'd look. So once I started ramping it up, well, 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 I started looking impressive. I started looking kind of similar to people I look up to. So I have like a really, I don't give a fuck mentality. You know, I'm going to do whatever it takes regardless if people don't like it. So I've never been scared to put off by rejecting you. Yeah. When you say that, uh, you do whatever it takes. I can hear it. Yeah, I'm not going to be put off by sticking three mLs of uh, testosterone in my ass. Like it's like you said, it's just a syringe. You put the oil in there, you bam, you stick it in your ass, you pull the plunger, and you're good to go. You're on with your day. So, uh, and I know it's going to give me the results. So why would I take anything less? I'm I'm a young guy. I'm 21. I could push. I could push it to the limit. You know, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to. I'm going to try to reach the the maximum potential I could ever reach. So I'm going to keep going until, you know, obviously I can't. So that's my mentality on that and why I do the things I do that people think is crazy. Like, wow, 1,000 milligrams of testosterone? That's unheard of. Or 1,000 milligrams of trend? No one does that. No one, no bodybuilder does that. I'm like, you guys don't know the fucking half of it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and uh i was even big on the forums i was big on the the reddit steroids forum and i tell people my dose they're like oh yeah, he's gonna die in five years he, yeah. he's a dumb fuck he looks good he's funny but he's a dumb fuck he's gonna die in five years no bodybuilder chris bumstead takes 500 milligrams of tests on his yeah. uh his off period. Like, yeah he takes 500 he's never used insulin he's never used growth uh 500 milligrams of genetics are just so much better so much more supreme He's only taking that much, and people thought, oh, you're taking more gear than most IFU pros. Like, you guys, no, I'm not. And these motherfuckers, they would not want to believe it. They would always have something else to say, like, oh, that's not the case. What about Chris Bumstead? His coach said he doesn't take that much. I'm like, yo, bodybuilders can lie too, right? I'm like, that's yeah. impossible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it was just people really get baffled. Like, they're so, like, surprised when I tell them what I run like they're they're like bro like you're gonna die in five years that's what they say like you're gonna die and I'm like okay yeah you can say whatever you want I'm still gonna do it you know continue being stupid yeah there's only a couple things that can really kill you really quickly like that the other stuff is usually going to be more long term I use in the podcast I a lot of times uh compare PEDs to smoking uh and and that it's it's something that's down the road yeah definitely like i tell people all the time like i could take three thousand milligrams of trend right now i would not die i'd feel like shit but i would not overdose or die mm -hmm. if people think you know 500 milligrams of test is a lot like i'll tell people well, what's a beginner cycle someone asked me oh 500 i'll make a video about it tiktok 500 milligrams of test that's it's a great first cycle you're like, bro, well, that's no, that's way too much. 250 is where you want to start out at. And I'm like, that makes no fucking sense. Yeah, if it's you want though. no results, your your first after a month, you'll be like, what the heck? This was not what I was expecting. Exactly. And then you'll have some bodybuilder guy, or I'll have a bodybuilder guy, I could be pro, make a video, say, Oh, I only take 250 at the moment. I'm 260 pounds at five nine, nine percent body fat. And I'm only, I'm under a gram of gear. Like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's, like, look at, I'll tell you, like, look at this fucking guy. Does he look I, like he's telling the truth? Yeah, they're lying. They're lying out their ass. Why, why, do you, why do you think they do that, though? I think because they don't want to be labeled as drug addicts. That's, that's why they don't, they don't want to be labeled as drug addicts. Okay. And I feel like when you get into that range where you're just constantly putting more milligrams of steroids and oil in your body, you probably don't feel too good about it, some of these guys. So I think it's them kind of projecting a little bit. You know? You know what? That's very insightful, actually, because, you know, uh, you know, we were just chatting the other day and, and you were saying something about like, oh, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, uh, putting all this oil in myself because, you know, on cycle when you know, it's typical for bodybuilders, and I've done this too. Be taking a five milliliter syringe like five days a week. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, you might fucking... get thirty milliliters in a week. Yeah, and, you're, and you're you're looking at that syringe and you're like, "Fuck, another one!" Like, I'm really gonna do this again. Yeah, and and, and you're 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 uh you're taking other tablets and stuff too, and you know, so there's something I I've made a joke before on the podcast about you know, like walking pharmacy or something like that. But that's you know, I think every bodybuilder has uh you know asked themselves or you know, sat around and said. Uh, shit am i walking to the pharmacy <laughs> yeah and i think i think we and me and you both and every other body but it's done it eventually you do feel like that you're just you just feel toxic like you feel good you look good and you're kind of like thinking after a long cycle of doing it you're like man like i kind of i kind of feel like shit like this isn't good like from, i guess i'm getting to the point where it's just not healthy at all like should i keep going do i keep putting my foot on the pedal and you know, you put on the brake, and these bodybuilders, they keep putting their foot on the pedal. So I think it's just, they're in denial. Is that why you're taking a cruise right now? Is that related to yeah. what we're talking about? Yeah, definitely. Because the main reason I'm taking a cruise is um, because I have a, a little bit of a shoulder issue. I think like an AC uh, collarbone, like shoulder injury. So, I'm, you know, why blast if I can't train as hard as I want? But also because after I noticed being on trend and all these, all this different compounds for say 15 plus weeks, I just start feeling like shit, dude. Like I start feeling depressed. Like, you know, that trend euphoria and mania you get when you first start, like you just feel on Mm -hmm. and I feel on and you feel like a bit of an arrogant bastard. Like um, you're just having fun. You're living life. You're going, you're fucking living in the fast lane. And then eventually it's just like, fuck, man, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, it's like going on a coke binge for like three months. And then eventually your body gets fucking worn out from it. And you're just like, man, I need a fucking break. So yeah. like, I, I can't do it. Like, I just, I just lose motivation. I get like almost depressed. Like my energy levels just plummet after a while. That's a good, you know, that's a good reason to go off cycle and do cruises and stuff. Uh, Cause you know, a lot of bodybuilders, you know, we talk about good practices to gears and on, on the steroids podcast too. I, you know, I usually try to say it as, uh, as honest as I can without like, you know, promoting doing bad things. Uh, mm-hmm. But there are bodybuilders out there that don't ever come off cycle. That's not uh, unheard of at all. And uh, I think that people, if they will come off cycle and do cruises or do, you know, like a one month off, they can actually make better gains because when you get on cycle and you're just totally used to it, like, oh, this is normal life, then you don't have that kind of uh, uh, mental extra gear that you can kind of kick into where you say, like, okay, I'm on cycle uh, and and I'm going to be going extra hard. Instead, you're just thinking this is normal life and I feel burnt out. Yeah, and um, like you said, I think a four to six month cruise is like perfect for bodybuilders, not like normal, t- you know, people that you know that care. Let's say or the more that care more about their health. Uh, Forty four to six years weeks. old. Yeah, like four to six weeks cruise, like a month, four month and a half. Yeah. Yeah, 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 a month. Like it's not healthy necessarily to cruise that much, and typically they say time on time off but no bodybuilder wants to do time on let's say you do an 18 week blast you don't want to cruise for 18 weeks you're going to lose a lot of progress yeah. you know you're going to lose a lot of progress <laughs> that, that you're, going to feel like you're, going to, you're going to look at yourself you're like man like i just lost like most of my muscle and i look natural like fuck yeah. like fuck if you do a, a traditional cruise so i think a good month month and a half is perfect because by about i noticed by the time I hit five to six weeks mentally, I'm like ready to go again. Like, yeah, like I'm ready to go. Like the thought of just taking trend gets me like excited or taking more gear, like making more progress. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to do this. My, my diet's more on point. My training is on point, protein shakes, getting sleep, all that compared to when I'm like at the end and I'm, I keep going, I skip a protein shake or I don't work as hard. I take the day off. So I think the mental part, is what needs the most rest you know because once you lose that mental it's kind of hard to to keep going like you said in um a good way because like you said you lose that drive Mm -hmm. so that's Uh, what that's my take on that what's a what's a, a steroid that you don't you don't like or a ped that you don't like you've tried it and you 
for you, you're never doing that again. Uh, Deca. Deca was what I did not like. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I don't like Deca is because I it's probably because what I was taking with, I was taking, I'd say about 300 milligrams Deca. So not a lot, but I was taking 600 tests and uh, 20 to 30 milligrams of T-ball. So my estrogen was probably fucking pretty high. And my prolactin probably got high. I did not have caber at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I figured, oh, the old school guys did the test Deca D-ball, which they did do tests, but I didn't know that at the moment. And they probably let their estrogen run high. They didn't get gyno. So let me do that. I did that. And I turned into an acne, bloated, depressed, ridden mess. Like, I had so much acne on my shoulders. I felt depressed. Like, I felt sleepy all the time. And I just looked like shit. Like, I didn't oh. look good. My skin was fucked up. Like, my skin was, I was getting acne on my shoulders. Um, super bloated. My sex drive was a little bit down. My nipples got super sensitive um mm -hmm. not good i think i got a little bit of gyno formation on my left side just a little bit and that's what made me oh, drop it like, i was like was it the kind of gyno where it kind of stings as deep uh no it didn't necessarily sting it was more so just um i would say yeah it was it was a gyno that kind of like now that i think about it it was like the kind that if you get on like a a preacher curl machine and you put your chest on there it hurts Okay, okay. It's hurts. The, so the I, area is, is deep under the skin. Yeah, I, I would say I attribute that to DECA. So DECA yeah. was one I did not like. And as you know from what we talked about previously, like like weeks before, I'm someone that holds a lot of water and glycogen as it is. So DECA just wasn't – with high tests, higher tests, isn't something I could – run but i i would like to try deca again one day with low test like zero to like no test to see if i would still get that same bloated look or if i get a more leaner polished look you know but it's never something i've actually committed to so i say deca is probably my least favorite <laughs> you, you know i couldn't imagine you being a guy that liked deca only because uh you you see you're you're like a a, a more uh hands-on type of guy and uh, that's, you know, testosterone is a hands-on type of uh, hormone. And, uh, I, yeah, I just can't see you being a guy that liked running cycles without test. From yeah, I like, I, like, I like the androgen effects of steroids. Like, I, I, I really prefer drier androgenic steroids like Proviron, Anavar, Winstrol, Tren, Equipoise, even though it's not as androgenic, it's drier. I like those. Is the wetter steroids like Deca, Debal, and I really like Amidrol, but it turned me into a, a bit of like a water buffalo after about four weeks. So, it gave you water in the skin, huh? Yeah, it did. Uh, it was weird. The first like week I took it, I actually got leaner, but as I uh, you know started eating more and I kind of would cheat a lot, I, I started holding a lot of water. Um, but it literally looked like my each of my muscles grew by an inch. Like I was just really watery and veiny my veins would just stick out of my uh my muscles like all the time that sounds kind of cool yeah so that's like those i like i really loved winstrol i really loved winstrol it's probably the best drying steroid i've ever taken better than trend like trend doesn't really dry me out a whole lot it just shapes my muscles a bit differently it gives more of um just a muscular look but winstrol dried me out very well better than any other start ever taken but my joints were shit like like you dried, dried you out did, did you mean because you were talking about you're somebody that holds a lot more water in their skin naturally yeah. you're listening and so this specific effect here in the skin is that what you're talking about yeah like it, it i started seeing more striations like in my chest and my shoulders and um, I'm typically not, I don't, I don't really have a lot of striations compared to most people. I pack on a lot of mass, like a lot of tissue and fullness, but the striation part is kind of a challenge for me. So the Winterall did that very effectively. I'd say I responded very well. Like I love the, it, it almost made me look a bit smaller, but more square, like that square look you described. So I'm yeah. very squared up and it made me very fucking strong. I cannot lift 
on at worth of shit because my joints were just trashed. Yeah, that you know that that's interesting hearing that it made you really strong too. It definitely has the strength increase effect in me too. And uh, I was doing a podcast episode with this with the this guy uh, powerlifting in Russia about a couple months ago, and he was saying that he doesn't like bench press because of what it does to his joints. But then he also said that the strongest person that he's ever met uses Trenbolone and Winstrol stacked together for his his peak for his competitions. Yeah, that's what I ran. My first trend cycle, I ran Winstrol um, the last six weeks or so. But I noticed once I dropped the Winstrol, I uh, gained like five pounds of glycogen or water. And I looked less small and squarey and more round and kind of just muscular. Still lean, but mm-hmm. more kind of like blown up um, with the muscle. So I just held a little bit more glycogen. I really liked it though. Winstrol, I would say is probably besides Anadrol made me the strongest, but Anadrol, the strength goes down after like three weeks. I noticed my strength kind of doesn't really get any more, uh, better, even if I take more. So like I would probably, yeah, it goes away. Like after like two to three weeks and you kind of just get the cosmetic effects and the blood pressure effects after after that yeah blood pressure effects yeah yeah you know, what's really irritating about the anadrol is that uh you, you know you can take maybe 100 milligrams or 150 milligrams a day and and you can have a certain strength level and then you'll be like okay well you know if i push it up to 200 or 250 milligrams a day it's going to give me more strength and then like you said it has no effect uh in the strength yeah. department and you're like what is going on here uh but 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 it may make you bigger it probably will make you look bigger uh, but then it's not the same with D-ball though. So, so D-ball, that's why I think I, I prefer Anadrol because D-ball, uh, I don't like that skin thickening effect, uh, and the estrogen from it. Uh, so I prefer Anadrol, but D-ball d- is stronger just undoubtedly because you can take more and more milligrams of D-ball and it will keep making you stronger. Unlike Anadrol. Yeah. That's one reason why I love D-ball because lifting on it, it's just really fun because the weights would just go up and the pumps of course were gnarly. And like you said, you could continue taking D-ball for six to eight weeks. Every week on D-ball, you will get stronger. And if you, you know, plateau, take an extra 10, 20 milligrams or <laughs> on a strength day, take fucking 50 milligrams pre-workout and you will be strong as fuck. So that's that like effect, that euphoric, strong, feel-good effect of D-ball always is there. That's yeah, one thing exactly. I really loved it. So before we close this uh, podcast episode out here, uh, there was somebody from Instagram who sent us a question and, and I had to get this one in here. He says, my favorite two guys to follow for gear joining forces for the podcast question for the podcast, please. Been pinning for two years now between blast and cruise also used to cycle on and off years ago. I rotate between my right glute cannot reach my left glute due to injury and mobility problems. My delts, and now recently my quads and chest. I really hate to pin my quads and chest, but just started because my glutes and shoulders have scar tissue. Not just a bit, but it sounds like crunching when I inject there, and when I push the plunger, it's actually hard to push the oil, and it will bubble out of my skin like backwards if I do it. Uh, I know this is playing with fire and just asking for infection, which, yeah, I agree with that, but I'm running out of places to hit. Any suggestions how to get rid of permanent scar tissue? Uh, I've tried rolling with a lacrosse ball, a hard ball, and other things, but it seems that years of injections have left it pretty scarred. Thanks. What do you think, man? Um, it's kind of hard to say because I'm kind of in that that, um, that period right now. Like I noticed my glutes, especially um, the ventral glute, I'm kind of building mm-hmm. a lot of scar tissue and I'll notice that, you know, that crunchy feeling, you know, when you're putting yeah. a needle in there and that's, you, know, you kind of take notice of it and like, ah, uh, it's not good, but I, I'm kind yeah. of, I have longer arms, so I can kind of like use a lot of my, uh, good reach. So I'll even go on like the back of my ass, um, like all the okay. way as far as back as I can get it in there. So like, I don't have to deal with that that scar tissue so i have really good mobility and um i don't like doing quads anymore because i would do them and it's like i got shot in the leg sometimes like randomly yeah like my leg would be done for like four days so i would rotate (laughs) mainly my my chest like my lower chest and um typically anywhere on my ass so not just the ventral glute but like 
all the way in the back too. Um, I've done my shoulders, but I don't like doing those. I've never done my lats. I did my calf once. That fucking was terrible. Um, <laughs> it was that was a terrible idea. But it's kind of really hard to say, man. Like I you just, have you ever done your arms? I've never like my, biceps. I have so much veins in my arms, like I could probably do it, but I've never even thought about actually doing my bicep or my tricep. Like I've never thought about it. But you could do those. The thing about the tricep probably wouldn't be really hard to do at all. Think about it. Yeah, there's quite a lot of meat there. Uh, I know a lot of guys do the they they do uh, sight injections in their arms to to have large arms. This is actually not uncommon with guys that have large large arms. So that's a choice for this guy, um, especially the bicep. That's that could be a, a and if he's doing the bicep, would he be doing on top of the bicep or more so like inside? bicep uh he'd want to do he'd want to like flex first he'd want to like he'd want to get like a one one ml uh insulin syringe with a half inch needle and he'd want to like make make his bicep into a flex and uh put it on a table and then and he saw that he wanted to make like build on the peak or make it the most whole in that spot he'd want to mark the skin in that spot and then what he could do uh is is then unflex his arm and do uh, but but then he will have made it so that the injection was in a specific spot, you know, to make the, the flex look the best. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. And by doing that, like, you're not going to get any imbalances. So if you want to do sight enhancement in your left or right bicep, like, you wouldn't have any size imbalances, right, doing that? Uh, it, it will build size, definitely. Uh, y- you know, I'm, I'm sure that you've known Notice from the spots that you commonly do injections, those are pretty big areas of muscle. Have you? Have you noticed growth in your injection sites? Definitely, especially in my ventral glutes. I notice like, especially when they're sore, but in general, like I'll flex, you know, like my um, my glutes, and I notice the ventral glute side will stick out for more, you know, mm-hmm. side. Yep, yep. It, so this isn't necessarily what I want, but it's just kind of a result of me using that spot for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people say, uh, you, you know, uh, sight sight enhancement uh, isn't real, but you know, the the uh, everyone knows that wherever they put their steroids, wherever they do the injection, grows really big. So, I think so it definitely that, I think, does work. See, now that you said that, I think I'm going to start injecting into my biceps now. Because, uh, <laughs> let me get bigger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the, the other the other advice I have this, for this guy is to use a longer needle when he's doing stuff like uh, he said he he's been doing uh, getting the scar tissue in his quads or in his uh, in his glutes um, when the when the when the uh, needle is not long enough so say you're only using a, a, a half inch needle and you're doing this on a regular basis and somewhere like your quads uh, a lot of times what will happen is the steroid oil will get kind of caught in what's called the muscle fascia, which is the area between your your, uh, fat and muscle. Um, And then your skin is above that. And when it gets in this area, it causes a lot of irritation and it can create this kind of like hard armor uh, in response where you feel like almost like a lump that won't even go away for years after taking a shot. Do you have anything like that where you have like kind of like lumpy areas, Beatrin? Um, I'm actually feeling right now. Um, yeah, a little bit, like not not very hard, like as you described. But I notice that when I do it, if I inject in you know, my glutes, two days later it'll be a pretty big lump, or a day later there'll be a lump. But now that I'm thinking about it, feeling, um, yeah, I kind of do a little bit, but it's not. Very have hard. some like permanent hardening. So, some permanent kind of lumpiness or hardening yeah. around some of the injection sites. Yeah, especially on that ventral glute. Yeah, a little bit. It's not like crazy though. It's but it's, it's definitely there. Yeah, I got that in my my quads uh, pretty significantly. I mean, everybody knows that I don't do my quads anymore. 
Yeah, of course, because <laughs> you know how, how bad would that be if something happened there again? Uh, so, so, but, but I do from because I used to really like to do my quads because it's so convenient. It's just right there, and and you have total control over it, and it's a big muscle. You know, like on the outer part of your quad, the vastus circumlateralis, you could hit like four or five shots going up and down that. Uh, but I do, you know, I wanted to tell everybody that I do have some lumpiness or um, uh, like hardness on the surface of my quad muscles uh, from doing that. And the main reason why I have that is because I used a half inch insulin uh, syringe to do most of those shots. If I would have used a one inch uh, needle to go deeper, it wouldn't have uh, irritated the area between the, the skin and the muscle, the fascia like that. Uh, so for this guy that is having a lot of these, he says he's got this this uh, lumpiness, and it, he said it, it almost feels like it's crunching, and he's he's trying to inject, and it's coming back out at him. That's insane. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that he's he, he's probably using a short. You know, how else could he even come back if he isn't using a half inch needle or something? He's not using yeah. a long inch, a long enough needle. That's what he needs to do. You know, one, one inch or I've, more. I've have injected and. Uh, my glue and I, I think I hit like a very prominent scar tissue area and I was putting the needle in my skin and um, the needle just wasn't really like going in all the way like I didn't feel any pain like the usual like you know little tick you get a little pain pinch feeling when you stick a needle in you sometimes it was like yeah I wasn't even going into my skin but I was and I could probably get to, I I almost got the needle all the way in like it's probably sticking out just a little bit but I had to really push that fucker down there I was like, it's already in me. I'm not, I'm not taking this out. And uh, I injected uh -huh. it. And it, it was very hard to inject. And I did not feel anything, like no pain, no nothing. And I took it out. And I noticed it kind of started leaking a little bit. So that was like the only time period I've noticed anything like that. Didn't shoot out, but a little bit leaked. And I didn't use it one inch. But I didn't get it all the way in because it was like really hard, thick. Uh -huh. it was like dead, dead tissue I was injecting into it felt like. Yeah, avoid that, that area. Yeah, that's that's the only time I've ever I've ever <laughs> had that happen. But everything's fine. I don't. I would say for him though, try your lats. Like really experiment different areas. If he doesn't like, I don't really like doing my chest either. It's just not really pleasant. It leaves a ball. Do. It leaves like a hard ball. Yeah, I, it just feels like crap too when you're doing a back day or a chest day. It just hurts to even flex it. So I would say try uh -huh. your lats. Try your lats or your triceps. That's what I would say. And use a one inch or, or when you're doing your lat, like your triceps, use uh, you could use insulin. But, you know, other than yeah. that, using those big areas, using one inch. But I'd say definitely, I, I want to try my triceps. Now, if you think about it, it's a very easy spot to inject, you know, <laughs> not it's really looking at it now. Like, I'm like, yeah, that's actually very smart. Like, I, I don't like doing my delts either. And a lot of guys get that scar tissue in their uh, their side delt. And a lot of guys, that's how they make their yeah. delts bigger is by sight enhancement and their, their delts. And, you know, of course, they're going to get a bit bigger, but it doesn't look natural, what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see lumpiness in the, in the delts sometimes. That's not a good look. You know, uh, just on the, on the subject, too, of, of doing uh, injections for sight enhancement, you know, it, it, it'll work with the, with the normal shots that everyone does. But, uh, if, you know, going with a suspension even really amplifies the effect because oh, yeah. um, you load that you load that up pre-workout uh with suspension and everybody knows suspension gives a bunch of inflammation uh yeah. for one thing and then you've got that uh you know high concentration of active steroid sitting in the muscle uh so you know because when you inject it it's active with suspension there's no ester so so you're 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 really uh hyper dosing the specific muscle that you're training with steroids. Yeah, I used to use uh test no ester. I don't think it's the same as suspension because suspension is water based, right? The water Yeah, it's the it. same just with an oil base, the test I, and I, uh and test no ester. Test no ester and I don't think it's as strong as suspension. Because I was using it. I don't know if it's because I was on a lot of trend, but I felt it, but it wasn't like what people described. On, uh, oh, it wasn't it wasn't quite as it didn't hit quite as hard i would expect something in water to hit harder than something yeah in yeah it was it was there but it wasn't like that that test suspension um i, I would read on people's uh, experiences and they said test suspension was a lot stronger and that hurt a lot more and um but the the test no ester smelled 
Like you test, you pin that shit, and you smell like the fucking was it? What was it? What do they put it in? Glucarol or glycol? I don't know, some shit like that. And they put in it, put that in there, and you smell like it in the gym. <laughs> like, it's just like put my put my fucking test semester in my shoe box, and I have my whole room smell like fucking testosterone. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really it's but. Yeah, it was really interesting. I, I definitely, I'd want to try Tren if they have Tren suspension. I definitely want to try that. Or methyl trenbolone, injectable methyl Tren. It's not Trenbolone. Have you ever tried that? that? Have you ever tried methyl Trenbolone? Because you've never, got the D Tren name. Yeah, I've maybe never, that's that's your my next It's one. a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your next <laughs> one. <laughs> I want to try it. I really do. But I know if I take it, I'm going to feel like shit like two weeks into it. I know it's going to happen. Um, I want to get uh-huh. the injectable. I don't want to get, I've only found the orals and I found the injectables, uh-huh. but I've never pulled the um, the trigger on it. Cause I know if I start taking this toxic fucking substance, I'm going to feel like shit my daily life really fast. So it's going to, my cycle is going to probably go downhill but i watched uh, your video on it and uh the methyl trend video how it makes you feel like you're on like meth <laughs> that really made me want to try it even more <laughs> i was like i really want to try this shit and yeah, uh, some, people yeah, say it's it's a, most... some people say it's it's has a stronger recomp effect than trend balone, but other people say it doesn't even really change their physique so i don't know huh. if it would even be worth maybe they're thinking. not using it consistently enough because it's the strongest, uh, it's the strongest male hormone that's ever been discovered. They like scientists use it regularly to this day for comparisons in the laboratory of of how strong things can connect to the androgen receptor, and they use uh, methyltren as the control chemical. Yeah, so I think my response to superdraw, oral superdraw, I didn't really like how I felt in my daily life on it. I liked it in the gym, so I don't know how methyltren. I would probably go injectable. Would make me feel. Yeah, it would probably be even worse than Superdrol for you. It because yeah, you, you a, a lot of people get sick on Superdrol. Not everybody, but a lot do. And and you yeah. said you got pretty sick. I didn't get sick on it. I just felt depressed. Like I depressed, did not want okay. I didn't. I didn't want to lift anymore. I didn't want to go to the sucks. gym and lift. Like I just wanted to like. I wanted to hop off everything. And I was like, all right. Like that was like the final like. Shot. Like I was in the gym and on it, I'd feel great. But when I wasn't, and you're strong it, as a bull. Yo, definitely, and I looked amazing. Like my my arms, everything, chest, my whole physique looked felt great. But when I wouldn't take it, because I would only take it pre workout, like shit, I'd wake up and I got out of bed. I'm like, man, if I ever take something like a methyl trend or a super draw again, I'll probably be on Adderall. I'm on that shit because. I need like a, a fucking amphetamine to keep going off something like that. Like it's just <laughs> like it, it, it's like I need to use drugs to substitute the drugs I'm taking. So I need more drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and I'm actually gonna get on Adderall. Like that's actually um something I'm gonna do because my energy levels, dude, they're terrible. So uh, I'm actually working towards a prescription uh, on Adderall. Are, do you take any any blood pressure meds currently? Yeah, I'm taking um uh was it Nuva Nuva Ball I think it's called and uh the other blood pressure med that you uh, recommended me. Um, okay. Okay. Telsey, so Telsey Martin that, or yeah something like tell, that. Tell yeah, me, Sartin. Has did yeah did that uh being on blood pressure meds has that helped with your energy levels at all? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I noticed I'm a, I'm a bit more vascular uh in general okay yeah so yeah, I, yeah. It does. uh lower, lower lower blood pressure more relaxed veins uh i'm always um high blood pressure is like my main side effect i get from uh gear mainly orals but um blood pressure uh, it, my blood pressure is always really high like before i got on the bp meds i was like 160 over 78 uh, on my cruise so it was oh, really that's fucking- that's high yeah yeah, I have. I have that's, really, that's the point where you you need to do something. Yeah, uh, it was probably a bit skewed because I only did one test and was at a fucking um, Walgreens or whatever. But still, <laughs> <laughs> your arm was too big for the machine. Yeah, my fucking. I had a pump. I just got back from the gym, so it doesn't even count. 
But yeah, I was thinking like, yeah, I think it's time for me to get on these because um, I'm taking high dosage of steroids and I'd get a lot of migraines um, uh-huh. just from taking shit like equipoise. Like my head would randomly just hurt for like an hour or two. I'm like, fuck, I think it's my blood pressure or my red blood cell count or something because my fucking head hurts. And I don't really get that as much now that I'm taking those. Oh, that maintaining maintaining a high blood pressure is not good for you. Definitely, no. All right. Well, I wanted to tell Dtren, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, bro. And uh, I know everybody's gonna enjoy hearing from you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being one of these guys out here who's you know doing bodybuilding and just saying it like it is, because people don't know, and there's only a few. In the world, in the whole world, there's only a few people who are willing to do that. And uh, so what you're doing helps people to know more about what is real and what is not. Because it sucks living in a world where you, where everything is fake. Indeed. Yeah, I agree. Very, uh, very much so. Um, I appreciate you having me, man. I've been watching your videos for past a year and a half. So I was a fan even before. I got on the podcast and I always recommend uh, you to people that ask, you know, for advice on gear. Typically it's more place for dates or whatever. And I say, you know, you should be listening to Dan, bodybuilder from Thailand. So I really, uh-huh. I really appreciate you having me on because I never would have thought I'd been on the podcast a year or so ago. So yeah, I'm glad I could be one of those people that could help steer people in the right direction. And of course I'm going to get a little shit for it, but at the end of the day, I'm just being honest. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, Stay tuned for the next episode. If you would like your questions to be answered on the Steroids Podcast, go to steroidspodcast.com and leave a comment with your questions or email or private message steroidspodcast at gmail.com or steroidspodcast on Instagram. Until next time.